We're on to Echoes, which is the next track in line on Last Night Was a Movie Scene. A cool story is that this track was actually the first that got the ball rolling for the entire EP. We made it last summer, so 2018, and it was just a great day and we were sort of feeling out the vibes with all the music and this was the first piece that we've decided, we were like, hey, this is good enough music, let's turn this into an EP instead of drop it as singles. So that's Echoes. This track itself is a little butchered compared to the mixed version. Uh, I can't really find the original sample, so it'll have to do with this. And this is how it goes. So that intro was just some drums. It was inspired at the time by that one weekend song. I guess pray for you or something, but it came in with toms at the beginning. And it sounds a little different in the mixed version. So we just use some toms. I use some crazy wacky Q, uh, volume or vol hollowed room. Just the settings wise mix was close to 100%. It's 80.2. Pre delay was a little lower. Decay was stock at two seconds. And then 3190 for the high cut depth, there's no depth to it. So it's just to add a little bit of room without it, with it. Softer and smoother. Some CLA 2A, so some compression. I maxed out the compression. It's really soft without it. With it, tremolo or tremolo. Just add some waviness to the sound. Took out a lot of mids from this EQ. And a little bit in the 4800 region. So then we had a little snare come in. And then it comes into the first half of the verse. Apologize for the crackling, but overall, just a simple kick. Snare, the snare I put through a lot of processing. I love this snare, honestly, although it took a lot of EQ to sculpt it. We use some compression, some channel EQ from Logic. I took this one off for some reason. So we added some Apex Vintage, what is it? Exciter. So it honestly, it just gave it a little more tension and brightness to the sound. Some Valhalla Room. That's where a lot of the sound comes from. And then a multi-presser. So a, com uh, a multi-band compressor. Just to sort of, what did I do? I compressed a little bit of the mids. And I think that was it. I really wanted to tighten up the mids. Yeah, so that does a lot. Multiband compression. You can compress certain bands or certain frequencies rather than compressing the entire sound. Although I did compress it here with the CLA 2A, I just wanted to be able to tighten up a little more of the sound. I love the snare. Some more perk. With some tremolo and then a bass. This bass I found in Sonic Charge's Sin Plant and I decided to keep the preset. Has some is it high cut on. Permutate is another plugin from Sonic Charge and it's just an effect. It helps add some grittiness and drive and width. It actually adds a lot of width to the sound. And then another high cut. A lot of this is really random because I don't know what it's doing at the time. A Valhalla with zero mix, so that doesn't need to be on there. Um, I added a lot of low end to the sound with the EQ and some multiband compression. That doesn't look like it's doing anything. So I think I just wanted to look like I was making something happen with all of these effects on, but realistically, I only used like three of them, maybe even two. 
So on to the next. I added some more toms under. To sort of increase what was happening or increase the momentum. So what I did here, that's what that was for. Uh, the Valhalla kick used some reverb and I just automated it up so that when it came out it would act as though it was an impact which is a cool way instead of using more samples just automate the instruments you have on deck <clears throat> and then I also used an impact that I reversed and it has some echo on it. I believe I automated it. Yeah. Very subtle, but it changes the tempo and it's subconsciously adding a little bit more movement to the track. <clears throat> Over here, this is the first time you get to hear the, the, I called it 70s disco synth. It sounds just a very clean saw sound. And it comes in as a pre-chorus. I believe this is where the pre-chorus in the song was. And then we have some drums come in. A clap with some simple high cutting, I guess. I took some of the sit, uh, the frequencies out there and a lot of reverb. Without it, sounds dry. Yeah, with the reverb makes it sound really silky and nice. <clears throat> the hat did nothing to it. Another little hat. Another hat. And let's hear the final just to add a little bit of movement to make things not sound like there's nothing. While the synth automation is still happening, I throw in another upshifter. I think it's a little different than the first one. Yep, and then I just reversed it. <laughs> yeah, so it was an upshift and then I just reversed it or it was a downshift. And then I threw it in the front, reversed it, and it swept in from an upshift to a downshift. Here we have the toms. And that's just a nice little tom roll before you get the percussion. Those little knocks are here to sort of help apologize about that, um, help with the groove and the momentum of the toms to lead right into the chorus. And I added a simple kick and snare as well to help that. Nick. Okay, and then we have a few other random little upshifters here. which add like you're getting pulled into the drop. So they suck you in and then it releases right here. So this is where you really hear the power of the bass alongside these synths. as well as the ARP, which adds a lot of high end. It adds like that 10K plus just brightness to the, the top end that this doesn't really support. So on this ARP here, I sculpted the sound again quite drastically with Pro-Q. I wanted it to be a lot duller and sort of have the same sound as the 70s disco synth down here. Can 
compressed. I compressed around the 7500 region. Added some reverb and I got to my phone it's like noise is and then a noise gate. So a noise gate again in a lot of my productions I tend to use a noise gate as a side chain. So I'll side chain the sound and I'll turn on the ducker setting, which means that it's acting as a side uh, side chain compressor. And I'll side chain it right to the kick. <clears throat> And you hear how it's ducking. Simply follows that, and then we come into the next verse. I apologize, it's a break, and then into the verse. So this sound here, simple massive preset. I think it's drowned in reverb, yeah. The reverb's so silky and it just sounds very smooth. It fits the other instrumentation. And then that leads into the next pre-chorus. Again, nothing's changing. The drums are quite similar to before. Here we have the snare come in with everything else for the pre-chorus. So something that I did forget to mention is over here the drums are more open so it feels more like a verse like something actually changed and then you feel the progression move forward and intensify in this area so that you know something's going to happen next. This drum pattern follows the same pattern as the chorus and we don't have anything new we just add on top of the synth brass here we automate the 70s disco synth in alongside the bass. And then they come back together to join as one for the chorus. The shaker here is actually a logic sample shaker. It's from the loops and Logic has amazing samples, so I tend to use them a lot, especially the shakers. This, I put just some reverb on, again, right around 80%. I shaped out a lot of the top end, and Micro Shift from Sound Toys, is, um, it spreads the sound out, and it depends where you focus it on, but it's a great plugin, and I'll go into detail into their plugins in a later video. So then after that chorus, we go into a final bridge, which then leads into the last chorus. So I'll show you what that sounds like. So very simple, nothing changes, we just have it open and just a simple snare. Then uh, saw bass with the same exact disco synth and the arp. Except nothing's getting automated, it's all just open and there to be just to ride it out when it's played out during a show. Again, a lot of production 
ha when I have uh, when I produce, I haven't thought a lot of what's going to happen live. So this was just meant to relax for two seconds before the chorus comes back in. So here at the end, just copy and pasted this section over here, which we originally hear in the first pre-chorus, and I just elongate the ending so you have more of a ride out instead of abruptly just ending the final chorus. Um, nothing changed, drums stayed the same, shakers stayed the same, stayed the same, and everything else in the bottom here stayed the same. So again, just a lot of copy and pasting and figuring out what to bring in when and how long to keep things. Again, that's simple structuring, but this track again was quite simple, not too complex, and it was pretty easy to follow, hopefully. If you have any other questions about this track, feel free to ask me and uh, we'll get on to the next track. Thank you so much.